you, you look at who they might get next and you think, well, who's the team that are going to cause them the most problems? To keep, let's be honest, to keep it interesting, you want Man City to go out as early as possible. Yesterday, um, uh, there was a wonderful uh, performance, perhaps in tribute to, to Pancake Day, but my goodness, <laughs> uh, what a sweet, sweet victory um, it was. Uh, just glorious football, um, some lovely goals, and I am talking about Mansfield Town 9, Harrogate 2. <laughs> Described as inform Harrogate, Andy. Uh, well, you can shove your informity up your ass. <laughs> you know, when Mansfield lost at Wimbledon about two and a half weeks ago, Nigel Clough was so angry afterwards, I thought, they're going to absolutely marmalise someone in a week. Marmalise. <laughs> marmalise. <laughs> and, and, and they did. Oh. Paddington. Andy, who's got a reputation. As, and the, listen, as, as, as people on this show have got a reputation for being nice guys in an unwarranted way, <laughs> <laughs> obviously Marcus is top of the tree. Thanks. But... <laughs> Abosh. <laughs> Brassel is, is genuinely a nice guy. All right. And he stormed into the office today and said to producer Rory, don't ever send me highlights from a Mansfield Town game again. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a man who just had too much football and he couldn't, he couldn't resort to watching Mansfield couldn't Town. Do it. Well, Nigel Clough, of course, is uh, Mansfield Town manager. Mm. He said they deserve to score nine goals and said it has been coming at times this season. Wow. I mean, how profligate have they been? Well, exactly. Walks I mean, off at a 3 0 victory. Uh, you know, come on, lads. You've got to put a few more of them away. About bloody time. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're famous for their very good defensive record rather than their uh, sort of goal mongousness. Well, Andy. But anyway, I'm not having a bar of them. League Two rivals, not having a bar. No, of Andy, we're having lots of bars because they've now got the best goal difference in League Two. You won't be surprised to hear. They're up in second <laughs> behind Stockport. Um, and, and Clough said it was an outstanding exhibition of hurting the opposition of being clinical <laughs> with the finish. Nice. And, and just the cat that got the cream. Can you imagine it. what it. it must be like being a manager? They will lose their next game. Your boys have scored <laughs> nine. <laughs> You're sat there going, yeah. Yeah. Ask away. Do you know what I'll, be, do you know what I'll be doing? <laughs> on the touchline when the seventh and the eighth went in, I knew the cameras were on me. I'd yeah. just be writing notes. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't even be celebrating. Yeah, this is part of the plan. What, what you've got there? Just just writing on, on paper, got it right. <laughs> <laughs> can I, can I, the listeners... We want 10. <laughs> The listeners will want me to ask you this question, Marcus. Yeah. Do you when are we going to get to the Champions League? No, 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 no. <laughs> definitely not. Do you happen to know how many um, bookings the Harrogate Town team received in total in this game? Do you know what? I haven't checked. No. Uh, but I, just because I wanted it to be all about Mansfield. They, they scored two goals at least. But would it, it would, it, would it annoy you to hear that they didn't receive a single book in between them? In League Two? <sighs> yeah. Well, of course, the original one of that was, um, I think it was Clough's, um, was it Burton Albion who got hammered at Man City in the Cup? Yes. That may have been the original kind of anger I had at teams not, not getting, getting a book stuck in. in. Yeah. I think it may have been that. So, there you go. Um, you know, it's all come full circle. Before we do go on to the Champions League, can I just bring <laughs> some more good Valentine's Day news, particularly specifically for you, Marcus? Is this Leicester City? On, on the, the verge? Way, no, not, nothing to do with Leicester City. On okay. the way in this morning, though, mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to receive a sponsored Instagram post from our good friends at Disney Plus. Oh, nice. Who felt the need to let me know mm. that uh, on April 26th, <laughs> there's a new documentary coming <laughs> called Thank You and Good Night, the Bon Jovi Story. Yeah. And I thought, what a fitting Valentine's Day <laughs> present for Marcus Speller. Did you see that as well? I got tweeted that. <laughs> oh, good, okay. <laughs> well, so you also got a Bon Jovi mail, let's Google that. So. <laughs> no, let's hope the musketeer isn't in charge before that comes out. Well, I don't know. He's doing a terrible job because it's our good listeners who have to keep um, me uh, informed with such things. Having said, having said that, if, if Elon Musk would like to buy the Ramble... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would probably better make my peace with that. Oh, don't. The fee will be high. It would be high. It at would least, be worth it. At least it. look at the fee. Look, yeah, yeah at least look at the fee. You have a go at Jordan Henderson, look, obviously. It, he'd, be sitting in, <laughs> he'd be sitting in here smoking blunts, yeah. thinking it was the funniest thing in the world. Uh, we'll just turn his microphone off. Yeah. He's not going to listen to it. <laughs> Everybody wins. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, right. Everybody wins, don't they? There's no losers in that scenario. Currently, you've not even got a booking. Anyway, but to those who did send me that um, stuff about uh, the Bon Jovi uh, documentary. Oh, looking forward to it. I'll lay my hands on you. <laughs> April 26. Um, there we are. Thank Given documentary is a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else want to join in? No, okay. Nah. There's plenty there. Andy won't lower himself. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah. the thing about it. That's the, yeah, it's a bit annoying. It's snidey. It? No, it's not lowering. It's, I think he'll elevate himself, I would argue. He can't get to the standard. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I agree. We've, we've gone far enough without saying FC Copenhagen won Manchester City 3. Um, Manchester City are the first team in uh, UEFA Champions League history to score three plus goals in seven consecutive matches. It's a made up stat. 
They're, they're just inventing stats for content reasons now that no one cares about. I yeah, so it's like the messification of football debate, isn't yeah. it? It's you true. Know, we've, we've run out of things to say about yeah. that person, so let's make up a weird American stat. American sports does that all the time. You know, you, you, you go into, to watch NFL games on TV at Thanksgiving, and they'll literally do Thanksgiving-specific stats. Mm. Oh, first, first QB to throw 300-plus yards on Thanksgiving Thursday. It's, like, it's, just, a, it's just another day. It's another yeah. day. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. It can be a bit... I understand if you, can, if you look at a season, say, halfway, and say this player's scored uh, the most goals halfway through a season. You know, okay, let's, I understand that. Let's see how they get on in the second half. It's like the first player to score 10 goals in the first seven Premier League games. It's like yeah. no one marks the first seven Premier no, League games you're just doing it to make it but, better. But yeah. this stat does back up the fact that Manchester City are a very good football team. Oh, yeah, well, we can all agree on that. They have won their last 11 games in all competitions, and you'd fancy them to go through in this tie, Jim. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it was always going to be a bit of a stretch for Copenhagen, wasn't it? But oh, actually, but the atmosphere, Jim. The atmosphere was great, yeah. especially all the alarms they were setting off every time City <laughs> touched the ball, which I only realised after the game was what yeah. was happening. Yeah. Right. I genuinely thought there was an alarm outside my house, as a lot of people did. <laughs> yeah. um, you live in London. <laughs> in, indeed, yeah. So I guess we'll, we'll come back to that. But when Copenhagen get that equaliser, especially yeah. with the way they, let's say, behaved in the group, mm -hmm. up, like ruffling feathers and just refusing to be beaten. Against teams and, from Manchester. Against teams from Manchester. A little part of surely every kind of football fan in the, in the, in the world, aside from City fans, are thinking, oh, can they do it if they've got a little chance? It's here, but obviously that was just brushed aside. And that third goal from Phil Foden, it's just, it just kills it as a tie, it's, doesn't it, it? Yeah, it does. Beautiful yeah. team goal. I, yeah, I mean, they were brilliant all night and Foden was particularly good as well. A delightful player. Um, when you say about the uh, the noise and 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 the, and the stadium, and all, I did think to, to myself, you know, when when Rio Ferdinand on TNT Sports was um, punditing on this, as he does, and said, "Oh, just the 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 home end behind the goal, it's so raucous. I oh, I really want to see some action down there in the second half. It's like Rio, you, you're going to get penalties for that yeah. because you're Manchester United bus. Just say, well, I think the neutral would love to see that end explode. That's how you word it. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. You know, um, a little bit of advice. But is there, is there something procession like about? all this stuff these days and it's only going to get worse when the Champions League changes next season because, yes it will because yeah. to me like Jim Jim's kind of reminded me of it talking about um, the Matson goal with Copenhagen um, equalised I just I just still felt a bit like okay I mean it's a little bump in the road yeah. mm -hmm. that's all it is I mean I yeah, think, but you've got to I celebrate think, the bumps in the road if, you do, was, you do. if there was a bit where you were going to be dispirited as a neutral it would be the Bernardo Silva goal because of beauty. You, you need mm. what a but, finish but the way it comes to him though is really unlucky. It's really unlucky in Copenhagen because it's Matson who makes the block. And you think in most other situations, it's a good challenge. Mm. And it just spins to Bernardo Silva. So all the cliches about, well, you need City to have an off day, which they're not having. You need them to be profligate, which they were to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of luck, which they did get. Mm -hmm. And then that luck yeah. got taken straight back off them for the Bernardo Silva goal right on the mm -hmm. stroke of half time, And that really... That all but killed the the, the tie, really. Itself, yeah, didn't it? It, I mean, it is an interesting one from what you're you're kind of saying there, um, chaps. That it's inevitable Manchester City are going to win this yeah. tie. It's utterly inevitable. But at the same time, you do have to marvel at the football. You have to marvel at the way Phil Foden uses the ball, the way Kevin De Bruyne does. Mm. You know, Haaland just doing his thing. Silver so, was exceptional last night. He, well. he was. So, so I, I understand that. One can get a bit down and say, "Oh, you know, it's it's it's." So, I mean, you are talking about a, a, a Champions League minnow here. Oh yeah, no, no, I don't it, think anyone's surprised that City have eventually rolled them over. And yeah, I don't think anyone's you know decrying the death of football because Man City have beaten Copenhagen. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, what is interesting about it though is I think now that City have won the Champions League mm -hmm. and they've they've answered that question that has essentially defined their modern era, they seem even more formidable. So you, Not according you, to Pep, though. He said 99% they won't win the Champions League and, or, or maybe the treble, did he say? This the treble. Because yeah, yeah. our, our well, former uh, presenter, Jules Breach, said, so there's a 0.01% chances yeah. there, Pep, so, put it to him. But, so he's, <laughs> he's playing down the chances of a, of a double treble, right? which tells you everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you look at who they might get next and you think... Well, who's the team that are going to cause them the most problems? To keep, let's be honest, to keep it interesting, you want Man City to go out as early as possible. Like someone, a double treble would be boring. City winning the Champions League again would be boring just from a neutral perspective, surely, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As much as we marvel at yeah. the football, right? So you're thinking probably Madrid or Bayern. And I think City would be heavy favourites in both of well, them. Sure, yeah, like last season, would, I mean, they did exactly. have Bellingham last exactly. season. I know, but they but produced the way one they of took, the, took the greatest apart. performances of, of all time, I would say. So that, that, is, that, is, that is the best performance I've ever seen in the flesh there you from, go. from a team. It, it. It, was, it was incredible. But going back to, is it, is it boring? 
I guess it, it's, it's just perspective, really, isn't mm-hmm. it? Sure. Because, for example, I think people forget that at the time, a lot of people thought Pep Guardiola's well, I was about to say. Barcelona were boring. Yeah. But historical distance gives it a different perspective, I think. So maybe people will look differently at City in a like 10 years down the line or whatever. Well, for a whole lot of reasons, <laughs> I, I, I suspect. But as well, I think, you know, you could say that about, say, Roger Federer or Rafael Nadal at the French Open or, or I think that's or, or very whatever, different. But I think, I think your Guardiola Barcelona Why? point is because um, Cause it's tennis. Well, the, the, the sport's are harder to compare, but with, essentially with City, it's, it's just truckloads of money being chucked at a project well, okay. starting but, off the season. But truckloads of money are chucked at other projects. But I think, so Andy, not, I, agree, I think your Barcelona Pep Guardiola uh, uh, contrast is, is, is much better and, and, and one that can be used. And in this country, I remember not actually feeling bored of it because it, yes, it was so. only kind of three seasons, although in between they didn't win the Champions League, of course. But they were playing, you know, it was, it was amazing. But, but you're slightly removed from it because it's happening in a different and country. It was also, I think, it was also but I think Jim, That's a point. But I think Jim perhaps feels this maybe more than any of us because Arsenal are playing their best football you could argue in a number of years certainly in the Premier League and and because Man City are doing this stuff that it's 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 stopping Arsenal winning a title yeah and the thing that the it's, Premier it's League has that. always but the thing that the sure. Premier League has always been able to say apart from other leagues look at what's happened to Bayern monopolizing the Bundesliga yeah. or PSG monopolizing yes. Liga no one could do that to the Premier Juventus League Juventus for a bit and, in Serie A yeah and someone has done it to, to the Premier League. Well, so they can, you know, there can be a bit of titillation for a bit. But realistically, City are going to win this title again. You think, you aren't think they? they're going to win the Champions League again? Go on, Tim, Jim, hit him. No, I'm, 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 talking about, I'm talking about the Premier League. This is this is what's more relevant. Fucking they're, unreal. They're, defi- they're definitely <laughs> going to win the Champions League. This is the disrespect. We invite oh, him in here. You're forgetting. You're forgetting two men, right? Jim Campbell and Jude Bellingham. All right. Are they playing together in midfield? I wish they I would. I fancy our chances for the Euros. <laughs> but what, what, let, let's take it back to the game then, Luke, because we can talk about all this kind of stuff. But ultimately, at the end of the day, there was some great football and some of the touches. I know he, De Bruyne is out, you know, really their made man and, and Rodri, just irresistible. But Phil Foden, some of the little flicks and oh, He's been an incredible former and he's an amazing technical player who has somehow avoided being a real hothouse flower given how he's protected by the academy system and how he's been brought into first team football like it's an incredible argument for the academy system because the, the general um criticism of how players are produced at the top level these days is that you know they don't they don't play quote unquote real football they don't do like a harry kane and go and play with players who are playing for their livelihoods and battling against relegation and finding that element of the game and what it's all about and Foden's done none of that but he's still mm-hmm gravitated and graduated sorry to 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 being one of the very best players in the world it was never going to be an issue around his technical ability and his movement and his Mm -hmm. fitness and all that kind of stuff and his brain but he's just he's just so tenacious as well he's super brave um he's a a small of stature but he seems really tough um do you think the plaster cast adds to that it's, oh, a, yeah. it's a little bit like Mark, Malcolm Marshall bowling at Headingley with one arm in a cast, isn't it's it? More intimidating. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You, you talk about his, his stature. He's got the best pop, posture I think of oh, anyone exactly. I've ever seen. It's ridiculous. He's got an amazing um, running style, an amazing balance, and and I saw an, I saw an interview with him in a car with <laughs> I think it was Rio Ferdinand, with James Corden. Quite recently, no, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thankfully, it wasn't uh, with Rio Ferdinand on on TNT fairly recently, mm-hmm. and he just comes across as. You know, respectfully, quite boring, but like bulletproof. Yeah, but, that, but they're trained yeah, to be like that. Bulletproof confidence, like yes. amazing. So, so and and so that is all to be admired, and it's an amazing thing, and it's great for England as well. And mm. he's an incredible technician. It does contribute to the idea that yes, we can talk about these touches, and we can talk about these passes, and how great Man City looked, and the finishes, and all the rest of it, and the team goal for Foden's uh, third, or for Man City's third that, that, that Foden scored. But ultimately, that still plays into the narrative that like Man City can basically afford to take the piss because they've been drawn against FC Copenhagen and FC Copenhagen are a light year behind them mm-hmm. on every single aspect but of this game. Everyone is in the Champions League this year. There is not a but team not that for can the same re- but not for the same reasons. There's no reason actually. That, well, the reasons that say Bayern Munich and Real Madrid aren't anywhere near Real Madrid this uh, okay, near Man City this season isn't the same reason FC Copenhagen. Yeah, that, that so, is fair so to say, that's yeah. the point that you've got to distinguish between. And I, as I said at the top of this, I just you know I I love the Champions League 
particularly through the 90s and maybe a bit beyond that, because it was genuinely felt like heavyweight stuff, quite mm. unpredictable, famous nights and all the rest of yeah. it. And now we just are seeing fewer and fewer of those until we get to a later and later stage in the competition. And I don't think the changes that have been implemented for next season are going to arrest that. In fact, they're probably going to do the reverse. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, the changes next season... We we'll, talked about that on the mailbag we'll, yeah, on Saturday, did, right? People should listen to that. Yeah, they haven't and, already. And, and they will, they will, you know, most likely be to the detriment of the competition. Um, however, though, I, 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 I'm reluctant to go too heavy on this. I, I do agree with your points, but it's not Phil Foden's fault, by the way. No, it isn't Phil yeah. Foden's fault. Um, he's just doing his job. Yeah, doing but, it bloody well. But you, I mean, we are highlighting the best team in in Europe against what is undoubtedly a minnow. I mean, you know, big sides would hammer smaller sides, you know, even in the 90s or the noughties, it would be yeah, fewer fair. and far between. You yeah. see yeah, more great course. comebacks these days. You might actually, I think yeah. you could, we do, we've seen some incredible Definitely. Uh, ones uh, with regards to that. But Copenhagen, the fact is that they're there. You know, it was a great achievement getting out of the group. So, you know, <laughs> being drawn against Manchester City is not what they wanted. You know, they're not made to. Sure. Also, you know, they, they hadn't played that. a competitive game since, <laughs> since the, the, the last it, game it, of the, exactly. the, the group stage. So, you know, it was a shame for them that they conceded that goal late on, even though, I mean, too, even if they were a goal to the good, you wouldn't fancy them. But we should mention, though, with Manchester City, it was a great shame for Jack Grealish, who made his first start in six matches, went off injured after just 21 minutes, and he looked very, very distraught. He indeed. did, and that's mm. there's something about Jack Grealish looking sad, because he's sort of someone who is really kind of unvarnished, where the sort of media training, he just sort of ignores it, doesn't he? He, <laughs> he really feels everything on his face, and you could, you could almost... It's just impossible not to empathise with him about how gutted he was. Like, he immediately knew, didn't he? He just looked heartbroken. Yes. And we all love Jack Grealish. It's one of the complicated things about City, isn't it? You can find them very frustrating, but they've got a lot of very likeable players. They're very good to watch. We all love Pep Guardiola to, mm. to varying degrees. And um, Grealish is one of those people that's very difficult not to feel sympathy for and not to not to sort of get behind and, as well. And he's sad yes. to see. And what's and obviously an injury to a player, and we hope it isn't serious, but an injury to a player is always difficult and that's never something that we want to see. But it, it, it's particularly... Um, impactful for someone like Grealish who feels like he felt like to me that you know he he'd, he'd said you know by his own admission he'd struggled to adjust and adapt to the what was expected of him at City having been the main man at Villa it felt like he got over that hurdle mm. and was really becoming a key part of it was becoming a key part of England because it wasn't that long ago he wasn't starting games for England mm. he was kind of being brought on as a bit of a wild card or mm. a bit of a kind of you know a bit of a joker and uh, this this is further compounding what has actually been a very, very disappointing season for him overall anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and Guardiola has made comments about you know his level and he's working hard and all the rest of it. But if you read between the lines there, you can tell that Guardiola hasn't felt confident in starting him very mm -hmm. often. And then this just compounds that. So it's terrible timing. You're three or four months out from the Euros and we'll wait and see the quality, or sorry, the, uh, the, the seriousness of the, uh, of the injury. But it's really like a case of a couple of steps forward and one step back for him now. Yeah. Because, I mean, it really is difficult to see how his, how his season is rescued now. Mm. Bernardo Silva also, injury concern over him. Yeah. So, slightly... Um, uh, mixed fortunes. Mixed fortunes. There. Yeah, indeed, yeah. But, um, I mean, you know, a good win nonetheless. Can I just mention Oscar Hoyland um, coming on and immediately clattering Erling Haaland, which is brave when you've got to go to the Yeti had to be honest <laughs> <laughs> saying on Monday how Rasmus Hoyland isn't cool correctly yeah I think Oscar Hoyland might be the cool brother yeah, right. yeah I think he probably him. there's always one who's cooler yeah. there's always one are you cooling your brother um I think we might disprove that theory actually <laughs> okay are you calling your brother I mean I, I think the masses have spoken on that <laughs> Um, that's going to be my, this week's poll yeah. I'm going to do Marcus and Jim versus their brothers because I haven't got a brother and none of you have you no No. so we can't tell it. Me, me and Andy are kind of brothers and he's definitely the cooler one uh -huh. yeah. mm, he may agree with the second part <laughs> um, let's move on to uh, Red Bull Leipzig versus uh, Rasbull and Sport <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Andy do you want to come in on that because it's disrespectful to call them uh, Rasbull and Sport when they're really called Red Bull right yeah Let's all make up words in German. That's what they've been doing. <laughs> okay. Is it really? Okay. Yes. Well, they lost to Royal Madrid 1-0. Uh, Brahim Diaz's goal of, of extreme quality settled the tie. Yeah. What an absolute beauty it was. Good he celebrations. Is so good. Well. Good he celebrations. Is so good. Well. well, I love it that, that, that he comes in for Jude Bellingham and does something which would would light up any stadium, was, was worthy of winning any game. And then does his hamstring. Yeah, I know. Mm. Yeah, it's better I mean, to have loved it, and lost, Andy, as Valentine's Day always proves. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like you're being Bellingham f literally for the day. Yeah, you know. He's, he's but then waited. your body can't take it. He's waited. Ah, this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's, it's like he's waited so long to 
to get a chance to be the centre of that team. And the way he's played for Real Madrid throughout the season, he's, he's been absolutely fantastic. Another former Manchester City player, of course. Um, I scores, just assume that, by scores, the way. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. It's, it's like it's like Sunderland in Luke's game, isn't it? It is a bit, yeah. I think Jude <laughs> Bellingham's the only one, isn't the Sun, it? <laughs> the Sunderland or the Stoke clauses are both very powerful in Luke's game. That's yeah, true. they are. Yeah, they true. are. And he scores, he scores this fantastic goal and then pulls up. I mean, the amazing thing about Real Madrid this season, I've just obviously written them off for the, for the Champions League. But if you had to pick someone else from the field, obviously a lot of people would pick Real Madrid because of history, muscle memory, the fact that Bellingham's going to come back at some point, all those sort of things. The amount of injuries they have had this season is unbelievable. Right. And, they're still and, and, the and yet they're, they're, they're going through it all. Well, when we were sat in St. James's Park at the start of the Champions League and we gave our predictions on who would win the Champions League, I actually said Real Madrid purely because Jude Bellingham plays for them. Yeah, well, he's the best player in the world. So, mm. I mean, it makes sense. But, right? I mean, he also, missed this game because he had an injury, of course. Hence, he has uh, played um, the injury was sustained in Real Madrid's 4-0 win over title rivals Girona at the weekend, which, like, is gutting. It's a letdown, yeah. that. It it's is. a massive let. But the thing is, though, is there not... Is there not we all we all kind of cl- glance over with Andy. Andy accepted because he obviously knows a lot about Spanish football. But you glance over the kind of La Liga league table and you and you watch a game here and there, that's basically my relationship with Spanish football, and that's it. And you look at Girona, you go, that's an interesting story. But actually, when you scratch beneath the surface, isn't it actually not that an interesting story because it's all part of the same group as City and all the rest of it, and it's a bit like... You've just got to give this... credit, though. You have to. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not criticising. I'm, I'm genuinely asking a question I don't know the answer to. As I understand it, and I'm sure you'll put me right, Girona's budget is something like a 13th of Real Madrid's. So though there right. is obviously the, the kind of City football group issue at play, it's they're not the same as Manchester City in the Premier League. Yeah, exactly. I mean, bear in mind that they had a striker last season, Tati Castellanos, who was loaned to them from another one of their sister clubs, New York City FC, simply so they could see him in European football and he would be sellable to somewhere else. So they right. sold him to Lazio. So basic, basically, they're like, a, they're like a showroom and a load of those players will get shifted on if uh, there might be one of the very best one or two who get taken on by Manchester City, like Savio, for example, um, who yeah. belongs to Trois in France, has been loaned but to Girona. Play for them. But the it's whole the thing sticks thing. to high heaven, though, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just disgustingly modern football. Yeah. But I, I think in terms of the football Girona have played, if you're just talking in terms of on-pitch competition with relatively modest, modest resources, as Jim was saying, they've played amazing football. It's not just that they've got great results. They're first team to 50 goals. They went and scored five at uh, um, Montjuic against Barcelona. You know, they're a real best foot forward sort of team. They're, they're absolutely great to watch. And in a league where it's not always super competitive and you don't hear of anyone, especially if you're watching it from a distance outside Real Madrid, Barcelona and maybe Atletico Madrid, it's pretty amazing. I guess the thing is, you, you would say as well, that Real Madrid being the utterly unromantic story that they are, have just saved their best two performances of the season for Girona. It, 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 there was very much a sense of, right, you've had your fun here. And Bellingham's part yeah. of that, yeah. totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is I, so Madrid. I mean, I, I know what you mean, Luke, how it sort of sinks high, Evan, and, 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 and as you said, it's disgusting modern football. What I'm trying to say is, how can I get Portsmouth as part of that group? You, well, you had, <laughs> yeah, well, you had your FA Cup win. <laughs> no, we're top um, of the league now, by the way. There we are. Exactly. Um, so if you're listening, Man City Group, whatever yeah. they're called, what are they called? Uh, City, City Football, football Group. Yeah, if, you, if you're listening, you know, get Port, yourself down Port, the South Coast. Portsmouth City, City Football FC. Group or the Musketeer? What would you prefer? Musketeer would be more fitting. We've already got the ex-Disney guy. Guy, haven't we? So, so you know, probably who's probably... likely to keep the the bloke with the cowbell? It's not. It's not a cowbell. It's just a bell. All right. It would be he, better. No, he's he's most likely to get rid of him. Holding. But if he hung it around his neck, it would be funny, wouldn't it? He's like some like, low energy cow. He's like dinging it. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes around the corner. You know. <laughs> uh, Jesus man yeah keep him in there well look yeah. yeah it was a good win for Portsmouth they're on the march yeah, yeah absolutely they are on the march um, and so are Leicester 12 points clear for the t- yeah. you, you often get one team who just blast everybody out of the way yeah. and let me tell you speaking from experience it's bloody glorious <laughs> 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 um, but last night at the championship did you see Jade and Philogene almost scoring a Rabona for Hull I can't it's, well he did score a Rabona yeah. I mean, he did well, score a no but I think he's crossing the ball and it takes a slight deflection and goes the in. The angle, I've, the only angle I've seen makes it very difficult to see whether it was on target or not. It, it was given as an own it goal. It obviously wasn't on target then because it's been given as an own goal. But it's yeah. an incredible piece of uh, technical brilliance. Are you being yeah. complicit in stealing that goal off him? Are you the nanny to Cristiano Ronaldo in that Portugal-Spain friendly? Yeah, nanny, we should say, in case anyone's really <laughs> yeah. confused. You're really confused <laughs> with him by saying nanny. Yeah. 
<laughs> like it was like an actual grandmother. Yeah, doing it. Andy, come on, it's, yeah. it's not a Narnie state. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, all right. It's a beautiful goal, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's worth seeking out. It's if you've a, not seen it. a beautiful bit of skill. Like, it, yeah, you know, get him on the plane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, you, listen, sorry. You mentioned like Harry Kane, so they go off Southgate. Sorry. Why is this guy here? I mean, he's a nice fella, but like. Well, back in February, <laughs> he scored a deflected Rabona goal for Hull. But we think it wasn't it. deflected. Yeah. And New York <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> yeah, and yeah Jack, all right, I'm convinced. And Jack Goyish is still injured, so here it is. Oh, yeah. dearie me. All right, coming up in the second half, we've got a blue card update, a Jordan Henderson update, and some Champions League chat ahead of tonight. See you in a moment. Hello, I am Sven Goran Eriksson, and you are listening to the Football Ramble. Ah, welcome back to the Football Ramble, everybody. Yes, on um, Sven Joran Eriksson, have you seen the, the the lovely news that Liverpool have announced that uh, Sven will be part of their LFC Legends management team for a charity game against Ajax Legends in March? Fantastic. Mm. It's, lo- it's, it's lovely, isn't it? And, and what is also really <clears throat> nice about and speaks very highly of, of Sven is that, and maybe you guys did know this, but I didn't. I saw an interview with him the other day when this was announced and he said, oh yeah, look, I'm a lifelong Liverpool fan. Yeah. But I never told anyone that when I was working in England mm-hmm. because I didn't think it would be appropriate and people would start asking unhelpful questions. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, classy. Yeah, that yeah. That is classy. Uh, I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. That's a man who can keep a secret. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Legend, though. Legend. Without yeah. doubt. Yeah. We wouldn't have to ramble about Sven, I don't reckon. I don't think so. No. I don't think so, yeah. So, yeah, he, he wished that he was um, would have been manager of uh, Liverpool at some point and so they... This was um, put to them, and uh, yeah, that'll be that'll be nice. That'll be nice to see. Mm. All right, everybody, let's um, talk about blue cards. Uh, we've discussed the plans uh, for for blue cards to be trialed in next season's FA Cup. We we talked about this uh, quite recently. Well, well, one thing we didn't consider, and this has obviously come out in the news, is is what happens to goalkeepers. They will not be exempt from blue cards. Under current protocol, no penalised player can be substituted until their temporary period on the sidelines has ended. So. If you go down to 10 players when, when someone's been sin-binned, you will get the 11th player back. Yeah. This is crucial to You can't to remember. sub that sin bin player because that would be pointless. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and if you do, you have to wait until the time yeah. is up, all that, all that kind of stuff. So the dilemma is, do you put an outfield player in golf for that period of time or do you put a substitute goalkeeper on and take off an outfield player? But then, of course, the goalkeeper would then come back on. So you'll have two goalkeepers. So I'm saying, Andy, Phil Jagielk is coming out of retirement. <laughs> Either way, it's great news for us. Because, because is Noel Quinn too old? What, what I like about this is that they haven't clearly haven't thought it through. No. no. And, no. Until until they, someone's Someone went, pointed this out. Uh, what about goalkeepers? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So, so And the thing is, they can't say that goalkeepers are um, exempt from the blue card because then the goalkeepers are going to just stand there tearing strips yeah. off referees. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Dyche has seen this and gone, oh, no. But, yeah. but it is absolutely bonkers. And it and and it makes it, I know I say this quite a lot, but it reminds me just of the Ange Postacoglu quote. It's like, the game is largely fine. Mm. Just mm. stop doing this shit. He used a really, really good word. And he said, he, he said that other sports are trying to declutter. And that's, yeah. that's exactly right. That's exactly what needs to happen mm. in, in terms of, you know, the issues we're seeing, that particularly that VAR's brought to the sport and a, a lot of other things that just slow everything down. This is, it's just hard to see what the what the advantage is here. 10 minutes is way too long as well. well Jim, that's, that's enough time to lose a game. This is, this is all for disciplinary reasons. This sure. is trying to get people to stop shouting at referees and all that kind but of stuff. But the laws already exist. I, exactly. Exactly. I know, I know, exactly. I know. And, and that's the point. Um, and, and I understand at grassroots level they've, they've trialled this and referees like it at grassroots level, but that is a very different thing. Grassroots level referees might fear for their safety sometimes. If you're in a stadium of 50,000 people and you've got you know, everyone around you, you've never seen that happen to a referee. At grassroots level, I think it is quite helpful to do. Well, to listen, this... part of the canary pushed over Paul Alcock once. He went down very easily for me. He did. <laughs> He did. <laughs> so enough water on the bridge, but to say that now. It's not too I, soon. I, 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 have, <laughs> yeah. to, I have to say, just like let's rewind a second. Just because the crowd's there mm. doesn't mean that referees are treated in an acceptable way. Just because they're not getting chinned every five minutes doesn't mean that referees are treated in an acceptable sure. no, way. No, but I can understand why um, referees at grassroots level like this. Because that has been the reports, hasn't it? Yeah. That's what we've yeah, heard. Yeah, it has to be. Also, fair, it, yeah. it, you know, it's it's easy to mock these things, isn't it? It's, it's easy to laugh at things that, are, that uh-huh. are so sort of different and so extreme to the fabric of it. But things, the whole point of trials is to see if actually mm. in practice they work. And it, I think it should be encouraged that things like this are trialed. I can't see this one taking off. I think that's but, a fair. But we we should be open to the idea of this. Yeah, sort of and thing. disciplinary measures are meant to be a genuine deterrent. 
Yeah, aren't they? yeah, yeah they are. And, and but here's the here's the thing. Like we have seen this season. I think it was Diogo Dallo getting two yellows quick mm-hmm. for, yeah. for chipping off. Yeah, and and people were quite surprised. And I remember at the time thinking this is a bit of a moment actually, yeah. because yeah. if other referees see that and go, okay, he's done that. He's implemented the laws correctly. The world hasn't ended. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. fine. Ten Hag was annoyed, and Dallo Dial- Dial- probably thought, "Shit, what have I done here? I've not mm-hmm. done anything different than anyone else has done." Um, I haven't read the referee's report, but I presume it was a dissent issue because that's what everyone seemed to think it was. And they could have, they could have really used that as a platform and started saying to players, "Carry on like this, you're mm-hmm. going to go." Mm-hmm. And if three or four players went in a game, a high-profile mm-hmm. game for that, managers would say what they would say publicly, but privately they'd be saying, "Look." You can't do that. Yeah. And, 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 and this kind of problem has ebbed and flowed for a while. And in the late 90s, it, Man United were awful for it. Famous, um, famous scenes Roy of you know, Keane, Roy Keane yeah. leading yeah. the Man United team around yeah. the referee. And I think um, Keown's done a similar thing when he was at Arsenal with, with the team. They had a bit of a problem with it as well. So it, does, it has happened for a long old time. The point is that the laws exist. And I think if you already, if you're, not, if you're not careful, forget the goalkeeper thing, which will be of interest to a show like this. And I'll bloody enjoy it for all the reasons mm-hmm. I don't take football that seriously, so I don't particularly care that much. Um, but on the actual blue card implementation for an outfield player, what are we going to see? It's not difficult to game out what's going to happen, and it seems highly likely to me that not only Jim's point about it perhaps being a bit too long is a good one, I think also over and above that, you're just going to see probably 10 minutes of absolute shit mm, because yeah. the team's going to go, right, settle in. We're, we're going to have trained for this during the week. Mm-hmm. Um we do two two banks or a bank of five or four or whatever, mm-hmm. and when and we know the clock's ticking, mm-hmm. we ain't going to bother attacking, and it's going to kill a game. Mm-hmm. I think genuinely, this idea might have been better received if it was pitched as an orange card. <laughs> <laughs> genuinely, because the idea of the orange yeah, card I know is what you already. Mean. There. I said the yeah, orange but... card, and everyone said you can't have the orange card because it looks too much like a red. Yeah, well, then I, we start talking about Fanta for about five minutes. <laughs> yeah. I was on the show. I remember it. Yeah. So it had to be a blue card, apparently. Have you had pineapple Fanta? I haven't, actually, no. Nice, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. to Putney Bridge after it, a full It sounds game. like it'd be too sweet. I imagine you can get it in other places, or have you got a guy? No, but that's, <laughs> <my> <laughs> that's, that's under that's, the bridge. Yeah, uh, above the bridge, but you drink it under the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Kiedis is there In a brown well. paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's a, that's a place I know definitely has it, you mm. see. Right. But there Good are many other outlets. Is it not too London. sweet? I, one off, you a bit know. bit like Lilt, is it? A bit like Lilt. I will, yeah, we'll, we'll try it. Because Lilt, cause Lilt, you had the um, the grapefruit to kind of temper it a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying. I know you are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lilt has now been, I think, Lilt has now been amalgamised into Fanta now, hasn't it? Yes, it's a Fanta yeah, branded it's... soft drink now. There you are, you see. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's like the City group of uh, soft drinks. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, Jim, were you making a point about blue cards? Oh, yeah, orange cards. Yeah, yeah. I, I think genuinely the psychology of it, people might not have reacted in, in such an extreme way if mm. it wasn't blue, because blue just seems so, Weird. like, so, but so un- un- unfor- Unfortunately, it, uh, something that football, genuinely, seriously, has been really bad about is addressing the fact that a huge part of its audience is colourblind. And, like, it, it was a, a, a big complaint that a lot of people had, particularly online, at the African Cup of Nations, mm. actually. So, Yeah. Well, that's me, Tom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> think think your point's through next time. Yeah, yeah he's exactly. hammering me today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> do you want me to go at him for a bit? I could do, I could do five minutes. To be honest, I think the listeners are starting to see what a bully he is. Yeah. Like the, <laughs> your mask is slipping. Exactly. Yeah. Do do five minutes of your Friday hammering of me now. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, should we do it in the Jordan Henderson update? Yeah, all right. Well, so it could right, be yeah. my blue card. There we yeah. are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Andy, the rules of the game are also under scrutiny in the Netherlands. Um, if you could explain it to me in Jordan, that would be nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Netherlands, of course. Famously, uh, everyone loves the colour orange there. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Henderson uh, learnt during Ajax's 3-2 loss to Heronveen uh, that uh, the Eredivisie doesn't have goal line technology. Ajax were denied a potential equaliser because the whole ball didn't cross the line. Henderson said after the game he didn't know goal line technology wasn't used uh, in the Netherlands, but was still unimpressed that VAR didn't give the goal. Now, if you see this interview, Henderson is really, really pissed off and they show us still... Of, of where the ball is. And they're saying, were you telling me that's not crossed the line? It's like, you can see, Jordan, that the, the whole ball hasn't crossed over. And we all remember the curvature of the ball in the yes. World Cup and all that kind of business. But you can see with the, just the naked eye that like 95% of the ball has but, crossed but the, the line. But the, the guy that's interviewing him mm. is A, speaking in his second language. Yeah, very and, well. Uh, very well. And B, explaining very well and very kindly, look, I agree with you. It's probably over the line, he says to him. Mm. But, you can't tell. And he's like, well, I don't know about that. 
It's good to see Jordan's Dutch is coming on, though. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely no effort whatsoever. He could learn. He could take a leaf out of Steve McLaren's book. He could just do a little bit for us. Yeah, do a little, little, <laughs> little inflection. I mean, the thing is, at least with Steve, there was an acknowledgement of I don't speak the language. Uh, okay, what I'm doing is not helping anybody. In fact, maybe even hindering. Uh, but there was an acknowledgement. Whereas Henderson was this just going, might ruin my career. This accent, <laughs> and I thought the umbrella was bad. Uh, well, Henderson was just going full pelt, wasn't he? Yeah. He was just really annoyed. But it's, it's that's what that's the kind of level of entitlement six months of Saudi Arabia will give you. Come on. Yeah, you know, I, I literally want goals now that aren't goals. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that how it is? Yeah. Could come in handy in the Euros. Why haven't they got goal line technology in um, in Holland, Andy? It's a weird thing. because they... I'm holding you personally responsible for that. There we go. As a European representative in this, yeah. this studio, you need to really fucking... Well, no, I have that. to decide. I've only got a limited budget. I have to decide where it's, it's, it's going to go. Mm. It's funny because but don't you spend they, it? They took it. Yeah, they 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 took it out. Goal line technology midway through a season in Ooh. France, a couple of seasons back in France, in France, because the referee's watch kept going off when it wasn't over the line, and it didn't go off when it was going over the line. So, it's so just actually, do the opposite then. That's the only yeah. job it's got. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite so a laborious. It didn't work once. Like, let's, no, just get rid of get it. Rid. Yeah. That it happened a lot. Yeah, and so, it's, it's quite a laborious process because you've got to dig out all, the, all these cameras from why is it the not stadiums working, and all the rest of it. It was just a malfunction. They went and got a different provider. Right. But I guess they think in the Netherlands that <laughs> if you've got VAR, maybe you don't need right. specifically goal line technology Ooh, and, uh, up. and the watch going off. Because yeah. I think budgetary is part of it. Like, you know, like a lot of leagues aren't having semi-automated offside because yeah. it's just too expensive. Mm. Right, okay. Not everywhere's as wealthy as the Premier League, Luke. I'll accept that answer for now. Carry mm-hmm. on, Mark. Sit your pain. Sit your pain. They are. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and they've also got the controls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in neighbouring Belgium, in Royal Antwerp won 4 0. Now, why are we bringing this to the table, everybody? Well, after the game, Antwerp player Yelly Bataille celebrated uh, with the fans by showing them his tattoo commemorating their win, which is on his bum. It's also very, no, it's, when you say celebrating their win, not celebrating this 4 0 win because it would have been extremely fresh. Yeah. <laughs> celebrating them winning the double last season. It would have had a cling film on yeah. it still. <laughs> <laughs> it's very small as well. So yeah. he's, you know, he's asking a lot of those fans. A, a lot of them will have just thought he was showing them their, his art. Yeah. And is it, is it, presumably that's a, that's a bookable offence, right? Because you take your shirt off, you get booked. So presumably he's getting so after the that, game, though, isn't it? Luke. Oh, that. oh, so it's after the game. He wasn't, he wasn't celebrating a goal. No. It's, oh, that it's, is why you have a, win. a blue card. Yeah, bl- exactly. Yeah. You bit, get your bits out, blue card. Bit of blue for the dad. <laughs> yeah. You get your bits out. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit of a leap, isn't and it? If you get, well, and he the, might have had his legs open. And, the, <laughs> and if, you, if you get a blue card for getting your, getting your, old, your old chopper out, um, you have to sit in the sim bin bit with your cock and balls out. <laughs> See how you like it then. And, then, and, and the broadcaster, the host yeah. broadcaster, has to, um, has to pixelate comment. it. Yep. <laughs> again, again, what's not good for the game <laughs> is very good for the ramble, often, but not always. Yeah. Yeah. You see, Toby Alderweireld is sitting here thinking... Was he playing? See, he scored twice in this game. Of course but he did. so did Vincent Janssen. They're sitting there going, why don't we get a fucking mention? Well, there Just because our mate got his arse out. Mm. Right, well, that's how you get a mention. Yeah. Why, why, why would we talk about Belgian football, Andy? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Will he keep this up, do you think? If will they win, he? If they win will he keep this up? Will he keep this up? If they win more stuff, will he get more bum tattoos? Well, the, the, the thing is, I think you, you'd have thought you're pretty safe because it's the first time Antwerp have won the league in over 50 years. And so, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't analyse it too much, Andy. Yeah. I wouldn't analyse it too much. There you go. There you, go. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Three of them are showing you're all right. <laughs> right, tonight, everybody, Champions League. Uh, Lazio play Bayern at München. Champions League could be Harry Kane's best chance of silverware this season at Bayern after they got gubbed by Bayer Leverkusen. And it was an absolute gubbing as well. <sighs> a total gubbing. I, I enjoyed the OTC reacts with our friend uh, Archie Rin Tut. Yeah. Um, and you guys really got across exactly how much of a shellacking it was. Yeah. I mean, talking of blue cards, all those Bayern players had their pants pulled down. They, they did. Big time. <laughs> they did. But, I mean, it's, it's such a complete performance for Bayern Leverkusen. Yeah, they've, they've they've been brilliant all season. We talked about Girona and style as mm-hmm. well as the the results, but but Leverkusen were amazing and three 0 If anything flattered Bayern, yeah. Did you love the fact, Jim, that that Harry Kane goes to Bayern Munich? You know, still very much the Spurs man. I think we can mm-hmm. agree. And he's thinking, yeah, surely I'll win something at Bayern. But of course, the Arsenal man, Granit Xhaka, and the boys stopping him 
That's Barlow great is. stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I can't not enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I know I should be more mature than this, but I just can't I'm, not I'm, enjoy yes, that. Dude. Well, when they're celebrating... Eric Dyer in there as well. When they're celebrating <laughs> yeah. the title Spurs win... Spurs are fired by Munich, and what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. When, when, when they're celebrating the title win, Xhaka won't be more mature about it. So there's no, no reason yeah. that you should be. Well, he's the one with the door keys. A bar, <laughs> a bar, he is the mature one, lest we forget. A bar, a bar, a bar Munich in the um, cups, domestic cup still? No, they're no. Right. Oh my they, goodness. They, they, got, I mean. they got knocked out by a third tier team. Mm, yeah. Fantastic. But, uh, it's Thomas, crazy, isn't it? Thomas Tuchel is still there. Mm. He will probably win the um, top scorer award, though, won't he? Have you, have you seen the trophy for that? It's massive, isn't mm. it? Have you seen what it is? What is it? It's four cannons on top of each other. No, so like, if, <laughs> the gunners. Yeah. That's nice. So that'll, that'll be. Fun. Well, he already, received, nice. he already received at that fan club thing that he went to. Uh, he, uh, Harry Kane received that tobacco cannon, didn't he? <laughs> And he was he was stood there and he goes, Well, I think I'm gonna have to Google what I have to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Poor Harry. Also, was, the reason excellent. The reason why Munich can't fire Thomas Tuchel is because Jose Marino is very much at large. I love <laughs> so keeps much. getting spotted in the in the Munich area. Yeah, and also <laughs> the fact that we know he's learning German. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's not by accident, is no, it? No, exactly. No, I mean that that is built being the most built they've ever been. They were writing this article about how shit they think Thomas Tuchel is and they've just put in this little line about Jose Mourinho is learning German he's like you know what you've done there yeah, that I doesn't mean. even make sense in the context of the yeah, article but, but you've just what, stuck it Xavi's in Xavi's under already. pressure and he yeah. just happens to appear in Barcelona yeah, 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 Tuchel's yeah. under pressure uh, suddenly we all know that he's learning German mm. he's way more interesting when he's not managing a team yes yeah. Yeah. ghost at the feast absolutely exactly. yeah. glorious elsewhere in Germany at the weekend uh, Hamburg Ultras fastened uh, bike locks to the goalposts as a part of a fan protest officials had to use uh, an, an, an angle grinder to cut the lock Despite the fact the opposition, um, Hanover fans, had displayed a banner saying the solution is 50 plus one, which is, of course, the ownership model um, in, uh, in the majority of Bundesliga clubs. And it turned out to be the code to remove yeah, the bike locks. That. The code was 5001. Wasn't yeah, it? it's like solving a puzzle in a video game where you've got yeah. to figure it out from your surroundings. Uh -huh. But you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of that amazing bloke. I think it was Everton who was trying to clip, oh, yeah. clip the, uh, using the old bulk off of his face. Oh my God. Amazing <laughs> it's bloke. It's so good. He was the, I wonder what he's up to now. Yeah. But they, all, all these protests about private equity investment in, in Germany, they've got way, way out of hand. I mean, you know, Union Berlin scored their winner. Um, in the 25th minute of first half stoppage time <laughs> on the weekend hell. because they spent so long cleaning tennis balls off the pitch. That's what football's become now. That happens a lot here as well. Mm -mm. There's a lot of tennis ball protests in, in England as well, you know. Get it sorted, everybody. Mm. Um, PSG versus Real Sociedad, or Royal Society, as I like to call them, <laughs> um, uh, is, 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 a, is, a, is a contrasting one. BBC did a nice article about this um, Oh, about Sociedad's academy and exactly, stuff like that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And Sociedad have 13 academy graduates in their Champions League squad, the most of any side left in the competition. That's impressive, that yeah. is. It is given when you set against the idea that PSG have potentially the best hotbed of talent in world football anywhere, and they've ignored it all. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I mean, I, it's, it's, it is a bit like herding cattle. There's so many good players, inevitably they're going to lose some. No, but, but they I haven't think, really I think they could do a bit. They no. could do a bit more. Yeah. Although, although the... Um, is it the owner or the the, the, the chairman of PSG said that the, 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 the bling bling era of PSG is over now, mm. he said. And, I thought, okay, yeah. and then in the same breath, he said, well, City of Paris, if you're not going to sell, sell us the Parc des Princes, we're off. Well, yeah. Is he going to franchise them somewhere else? No, they're just going to build a new stadium somewhere oh, else. Oh, okay. Right. I thought he meant he was going to take PSG to like another um, city or something. And of course, at the moment, uh, at Real Sociedad, Kieran Tierney. I love that. He's on loan. Yeah, I love that you've got all, the, all these academy players. It's a really, it's meant to be a beautiful city, isn't it? And you've got oh, this just, just Scottish lad having the time of his life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would be nice if they beat PSG, Andy. Come on. That'd be amazing. It would be go against what we said at the top of this mm. procession type fixtures. Yeah. I mean, it'd be brilliant if they were able to do it. Because it's the first game in Paris, right? Yeah, yeah, so. and it it does feel as if this particular last sixteen of the Champions League draw is a bit. Mm, yeah, and, and I think it? also I think they're the side we're looking at to maybe do something. Well, it's also other than Arsenal, of course. We, of course, uh, those those of us who don't support our Champions League team and find part, aspects of the Champions League boring these days, uh, particularly at, at the start. You know, there's one thing you can rely on, which is PSG setting fire to themselves. Mm. And and if that happens against Real Sociedad, <laughs> then I'll bloody enjoy it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's great. The, 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 every year that goes on that PSG don't win the Champions League is mm. fine by yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Is Carlos Vela still at Real Sociedad? <laughs> <laughs> I know he's, uh, he's king of California, isn't he? Yeah, moment, king, king of LA. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much for listening to the Football Ramble, part of the ACAST Creator Network. Patron subscribers, don't go anywhere. Keep listening for Ramble Uncut. If you're not a patron subscriber, sign up to get Ramble Uncut every single Wednesday. Head over to patreon.com forward slash football ramble. And of course, you can all follow us on Twitter. 
So yeah. It's currently known as X, though, Mark, because it's yeah. absolutely clear. Right, yeah. okay, okay. Elon yeah. Musk bought it and he changed its name to X. You can yeah. still find it on Twitter.com, but I'm sure he's going to sort out that mess. Right, okay. Yeah. I appreciate you um, picking up the pieces there. Yeah. Uh, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram at Football Ramble. Follow us on Spotify. There we are. Thank, thank you, Luke Moore. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim Campbell. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew Brassel. Thanks. And thank you, Elon Musk. Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.